Hey guys, the Minis Forum NAD9 Mini PC is not that mini, but it is extremely powerful. In fact, it benchmarked to be the fastest mini PC that we tested on the lab. And also the Intel graphics turned out to be extremely powerful. Full disclosure, I got sent this mini PC free of charge, but there's no contract, there's no script. I don't get paid. And as always, I tell you exactly how it is, the good and the bad. The highlight is the processor. It's an i9 12900H from the Alder Lake generation. We have six performance cores with hyper threading and eight efficiency cores with a total of 20 threads. Here we have the results for Cinebench R23 in the multi-core test and with 11,007, this is the best result we've seen from a mini PC so far. Also in the single core, test we're getting 1791 points. For reference here we have Cinebench R15 2083 for the multi and 216 for the single thread test and here's Cinebench R20 4564 for the multi and 587 for the single core test. I was also really surprised how quiet this computer is. It has a decent CPU cooler integrated and for the first time it actually has a sensor to measure the RPM. It's around 1000 RPM but even better you can go into the BIOS and there's an option to configure the fan speed so you can really tweak it to your liking. You can have it run a little bit hotter but quiet or if you prefer lower temperatures and better performance have the fan configured to run a little bit faster. Also in the BIOS is a setting for when the power cuts out, the mini PC can be configured to turn back on as soon as power is restored. I always double check the specifications of all the ports by doing real life tests. To test USB, I have a 10 gigabit SSD. For wireless, a Xiaomi Wi-Fi 6 router. And for testing ethernet, we have a NAS from Acer Store with a RAID 10 array. And it didn't take too long to find a few issues. So let's have a look at all the interfaces. At the front here we have the power button. It has a blue LED. This is a USB-C port with 10 gigabits per second. A microphone and headphone goes here. And I had some issues with these USB ports. It has five gigabits per second, but when running a benchmark, the machine would lose connection to the USB device. If you messed up your BIOS settings and you want to reset the CMOS, you just stick a little uh, pin into this hole. Heaps more ports at the back. Let's start here. This is a 2.5 gigabit ethernet port. The controller is from Intel, which is nice. However, benchmarking it, I only got 170 megabytes per second. That is way less than the NAS can do. It can achieve a sustained 260 to 270 megabytes per second. It's got a RAID 10 array with 7200 RPM drives. So not quite sure what's going on here. Wi-Fi performance is also a little bit average. Despite a Wi-Fi 6 adapter from Intel, we're getting just over 30 megabytes per second. Now in comparison, my main desktop also uses an Intel Wi-Fi 6 adapter and here I'm seeing around 50 to 60 megabytes per second. We have two USB-C ports. This one does data and video. We're getting 10 gigabits per second and also 4K60 in the full RGB color space. This one only does video. We're getting 4K60 in RGB. Two HDMI ports. They can do 4K60. However, you do not get the full RGB color space. We're only getting YCBCR420. Two USB 3 ports with five gigabits per second two USB 2 ports with 480 megabits and here goes the power supply. Here we have the power supply and it's very generous with up to 120 watts. In terms of power consumption running Cinebench testing all the cores we're getting around 53 watts for the entire machine. Running Cinebench and testing just a single core we're getting 43 watts and running games in crisis I saw up to 80 watts, but most of the time it was hovering between 60 to 70 watts. In the box is the mini PC. We get a power supply, a stand, some screws, and also a HDMI cable. Opening the machine is pretty straightforward. 
This machine is configured with 16 gigabytes of RAM in dual channel configuration. So we have two 8 gigabyte DDR4 memory modules. You can get this machine configured with more RAM and we will talk about that later. We have a M.2 NVMe from Kingston connected with PCI Express 4. And here we have the results of the Crystal Disk benchmark and they are fantastic, really decent storage. At the back of the machine, we can install two two and a half inch SATA drives. I can also see two additional fan headers. A third one is already used by the processor cooler. And then I got really excited. There is a MXM slot in this machine, which in theory lets you install a dedicated graphics card. But before getting our hopes up, I reached out to Minis Forum and asked them if they could give us more specifications about the MXM slots, for example, uh, what wattage is supported and have they tested it with any graphics cards. And unfortunately, I got back from the manufacturer that they're having some stability issues. And at the moment, the MXM slot is not supported. So that's a real shame. The integrated Intel graphics is actually pretty decent. In fact, it is, again, the fastest result that we have seen on the channel. Here we have results for Skydiver, 15,422, and in Firestrike we're getting 4,857. This translates to decent gaming performance. This is Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Now we are running at 720p with the lowest details, but it is running at around 60 FPS, and this is the first time I'm seeing such a result from a mini PC. We get a similar result in Strange Brigade with the Vulcan API, 720p, low details, and again, over 60 FPS, that is really impressive. Older games, unfortunately, didn't work that well. That is probably to do with the Intel drivers. For example, Dirt 3, it crashed to the desktop. And here we have Crisis, and it doesn't run well at all. It's very stuttery and not smooth at all. So older games, I think, will not run too well on this machine. It comes pre-installed with Windows 11 Pro. And the Intel GPU is also from the latest generation. It supports all the video codecs. Doesn't matter if it's H.264, H.265, VP9 and AV1. All these codecs are supported. And finally, let's talk about the pricing. There are a couple of options. You can get the machine directly from the Minis Forum store. You're looking at 709 US dollars with 16 gig of RAM and 512 gig of storage. 759 US dollars for the same machine, but with 32 gig of RAM and 512 gigs of storage. And for 809 US dollars, you can get 32 gigs of RAM with a terabyte of storage. You can also get the machine from Amazon. I will put a link down below in the video description. The pricing should be very similar, but maybe you are more comfortable purchasing it from Amazon. So guys, the highlight is really the processor. If you're doing anything that requires a lot of threads and really decent CPU performance in a small form factor, then this machine is a pretty good option. I also like that it's really quiet and that you can go into the BIOS and configure the fan speed to your liking. That is really good to see. The Intel graphics is also extremely capable, at least compared to other mini PCs. It's a real shame that older games don't work too well. It's probably to do with the Intel drivers. And yeah, a real shame that the MXM slot is not supported. The front USB port turned out to be flaky and also the Wi-Fi performance as well as the 2.5 gigabit Ethernet. Despite being from Intel, the performance is a little bit behind what I've seen on other mini PCs. So guys, let me know what do you think of this computer? And if you have any specific questions, let me know. I will do my best to answer them down below in the comment section. And that's it for this video. I will put two videos for you to check out on the screen if you're interested in learning more about mini PCs. And that's it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I shall see you soon with another one.